No, no. All right. Welcome to the channel, everybody. So in this video, hopefully I'm going to slap this whole situation back together. So as you can see, we have the stubs, we have a max, we have uh, the casing welded, all the bolts are in that bag. I got the gear oil, I got the gasket maker. So at the bare minimum in this video, we'll at least, you know, RTV this all, get it all dry, wait a couple hours or whatever, then fill it. And let's just get the diff, you know, put back together and not leaking. That's my main priority today for now. So there's a couple things that I do want to talk about before I put you on the tripod and start assembling all this. Um, number one being, I am probably going to leave the stock bushings in the case. As you can see here, I'll try to get a good, uh, you know, nice little zoom up there, but I'll put you guys on the tripod in a second and I'll wiggle those. You know, I'll shove something in there and wiggle it because to me, they don't really look dry rotted. I'm going to, I'm trying to get it nice close up. It's not letting me. There we go. Yeah. They don't really look dry rotted and, and cracked and gross. So plus, I mean, it's obviously going to be annoying to take it all back apart if those bushings eventually fail, which they will because they're probably, uh, what's this thing? 34 years old, 34 years old or uh, 34 year old rubber pieces, right? That's automatically not going to be ideal, but I don't really want to spend any more money on the situation here because this is supposed to be, you know, super cheap budget. We're doing it on the garage floor. You know, this build is for all the driveway guys out there. And I'm really trying to be, you know, under two grand for the entire car for absolutely everything that's already factoring in. I traded a $1,500 dirt bike for it. So that leaves like 500 bucks left to, you know, get it as good as we can before the first event to see if it's possible. So that's the goal here. Um, it's kind of freezing in Maine right now. I think it's like 35 degrees. So I'm honestly going to go put a thick jacket on, maybe some overalls before I spend time out here. But yeah, that's the goal. Also, one more thing. Let's just, let's just bring it up. Why not? Uh, yeah, that's all got to be cleaned. I'll clean that in a minute. Um, but as you can see, actually, I don't know. You can't really see right there. There's four of these holes. So there's one. I'll try to show you the other ones. There's the other one. And uh, you can see the boogerness. You can see that's a snot right there. You know what I mean? These welds are not... Good. Look at that dude accidentally welded on the carrier or whatever that's called. So I realistically, I do not have high hopes for these welds in here just because the design of the diff. And I actually did weld this myself because I don't want anyone to feel like they're accountable if these welds break. So I'm publicly, Hey, what's up, buddy? I'm publicly making it known that I did these welds and I will show you. I will film it if they break. But yeah, like I said, I'm not super confident <laughs> in those welds. If I'm being honest, they don't look good. The welder did not sound good while I was doing it. So the bright side is that this part is the easy part. I have another one of these in the car right now. So this part is easy to get your hands on and I'm gonna bring the other one to an actual welder to have a spare with good welds on it. This, this is the annoying one to deal with because it's aluminum. So the beautiful thing is now that that one is done, if these gears blow up and it ruins all these gears here and it, you know what I mean? It starts to strip these out. I can easily get another one of these, have any good welder weld that and then put this piece on it. And at that point, we might as well do the bushings, the seals and that kind of stuff. But I also got to figure out which one's which. As you can see, one is way taller 
in here, actually, another thing. Look at that. Oh, my God. Look at the booger. Look at the boogers in there. I got to get, like, a flathead screwdriver and a hammer and knock all the boogers out of the splines and then shake all the, like, slag out of, uh, you know, probably way down in there is a bunch of junk from, you know, the welder spitting up in there. But, uh, yeah. On the bright side, these are cheap. The 1.6 stock diff is uh very how do i word it like people throw them out i think i paid 80 bucks for this so they're really they're plentiful they're plentiful and like i said i literally have another one in the car right now as we speak i have another one of this but it has a snapped that so yeah anyway before the rambling intro continues on for too long let me, uh, I'll throw a jacket on and let's start cleaning and RTVing. What I just did with this is I put it in my kitchen sink and I put a screwdriver, a really long screwdriver down into here and just cleaned all the splines out. And then I flipped it and turned it a bunch of times while spraying the faucet up into it. So a lot of stuff came out. This is all I'm saying. There a lot of welding what is it called? I don't, it was a MIG welder with gas. Is it still called slag? I'm not sure, but a lot of particles came out. If this car drives good enough to not need to be turboed, it's gonna burn no tires at all, which is gonna be so amazing. All right, I mean, that surface, minus uh, me not actually having brake cleaner, looks okay. I never know how much to put on. I've done this plenty of times, believe it or not, and I still, to this day, don't know what the perfect ratio of ultra black gasket maker is. So let's just do a nice little bead all the way around. We're going for the world's cheapest JDM drift build, bro. The Mustang was supposed to be world's cheapest drift build, but not only is this JDM, but I think we're gonna be into it for even less than the Mustang. All right, well, that's as good as that's gonna get probably. The question is, should I put a little bit more on the bottom? Yeah, because this is where it's gonna leak. This area right here, if it will leak. Give you a better look there. Sending it. I think so, I could be completely full of it, but I'm pretty sure it goes like this. Something like that, I believe. We're, uh, we're getting it, I guess, dude. We're doing a Miata diff. So here it is, I think. Hopefully this is correct. And, uh, yeah, I guess let's try to pop those in now. So... I might have to look this up, but I think AJ said the short one is driver side. I don't know what AJ was talking about, but I trust him because he has had multiple Miatas as well. So short one, wait, am I looking at this in the correct direction? Yeah, this is totally the driver side. This is the passenger side. Passenger side short, driver side long. Check that out, when I turn this, they both turn in the same direction. Fantastic. Welded diff, reinforced diff. Um, I'm gonna let the RTV dry before I put the fluid in. I just got the cheapest 7590 that they have at the parts store. Yeah, so I mean, general recap, there are failure points here. Um, obviously, the major failure point is the welds inside. Well, first of all, the gears are weak already. Like if I put super grippy tires on it, one clutch kick might be able to strip the ring gear. So that's already a flaw. Second flaw is that my welds inside the diff might be garbage. So it's possible that those welds will fail. And then when those welds fail, the diff 
like a bunch of me huge metal balls of metal, or how do I work? Huge metal balls that used to be welding wire will get stuck in the ring gear and strip the teeth off anyway, if those welds fail, possibly. Um, so yeah, those welds could fail. And then another flaw is that these OEM bushings at some point can fail, but a good amount of play, if you could see that, but the rubber is not cracking. The rubber is not dry rotted. So this one is way stiffer. So this side might tear first, if and when, obviously. But if these fail, this is easy. This is a super easy job to do. So hopefully they don't fail, because like I said, we're trying to keep the budget super low just to see what we can really get away with here. Yeah, I mean, there it is. We have a welded 1.6 diff, reinforced, looks good. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, whatever this is. I think maybe in tomorrow's video, I will jack this up and start to remove the broken diff out of the car. I think that's probably a good next step, right? But for now, we got this all taken care of. Everything's good in the hood. So thanks for watching. Peace out.